What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Whatever News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. Move like a VPN, even when VIP. It would take a whole fleet of IT, cybersecurity, to ever think they gon' crack me. Well encrypted, like an entire IP, running through tunnel mode. You gon' stand on business or you gon' move? Only time I ask, what are those? These increase like I'm running shit. Gohan X a Piccolo, I'm a now the song that you just heard is actually a new freestyle that I just released called Creative Luxury. It's a response to the collective slash group known as A Room Full of Mirrors. They recently released their record. So if you like, you can go check it out and go check out theirs. And let me know if you think I did my thing because I think I spit some heat. I'm just saying, but you be the judge. Let me know. But we're going to start this episode off with Forever News a bit different. Uh, today I want to talk about manga sales first because we have some very, very, very big news, very important important news now i don't have the full manga sales of the week list right now because it's still not necessarily ready yet but i do have some of them and the reason why i'm starting with this and the reason why i feel it's very important and imperative to actually speak on this is because a couple of things that we have been waiting to see pan out waiting to see what's happening have arrived and dropped in our lap, folks, because one, we've been waiting to see. If you're in the know, then you know that we've been waiting as far as the Boruto and Naruto fandom to see what it looks like sales-wise for the first volume of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. So that's already been a huge one. That is one of the ones we're going to talk about here in a second extensively because that right there is going to determine a lot, in my opinion. It's going to determine the future of the Boruto story, the length of the Boruto story moving forward, and a lot of different aspects in general, because that is ultimately one major factor at the end of the day. You know, we love to talk about manga for the artistic expression and these incredible stories and the incredible, you know, anime that they turn into at a certain point when they get adapted or whatnot. But in all actuality, it's a business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the business of them selling manga and other things obviously it's not just a manga but i say all that to say that we're going to talk about the boruto volume one of two blue vortex sales because we have the first three days of those sales we also have the first few days of sales for the manga that it looks like shonen jump at the very least in the west is doing something they've never done before like i've never seen in all the years of me following this magazine very closely under a microscope i've never seen them going this hard for a series specifically because it has obtained a western audience and that is Kagurabachi. we got some sales for Kagurabachi's first volume in as well and that's a very big deal because it looks like shonen jump is going full steam ahead on Kagurabachi solely off the fact that it made waves and made headway very early on with the manga you know it went viral and everybody was talking about it that's a very big deal and ultimately Kagurabachi, yeah is going to probably set the tone for what shonen jump is going to be doing moving forward so we will talk about those sales in a second as well and another one black clover because black clover we got sales of the latest volume as well and i don't want to say maybe i'm excited but more so i don't know what's going on with manga i'm gonna keep it all the way real not necessarily i don't know what's going on with manga but more so sales in general for all of these battle series minus a few aren't looking great like outside of one piece that it's going to continue until it really loses the plot one piece still sells very well Jujutsu Kaisen, no questions. Jujutsu Kaisen is still one of the last Mohicans of selling well. Outside of that, most of manga that I've been seeing, a battle series or whatnot, have slowly but surely been shrinking and shrinking sales-wise. Manga as a whole, we've been, if you follow the segment, which is a lot of people's favorite segment that we always usually do at the end of Fenever News, where I talk about the top 50 best-selling manga of the week. Honestly, it's pretty awesome segment is one of my favorites i always talk about as of late that yo it's so strange how we went from three or four years ago manga sales like to get into the top 10 of selling manga you easily got to be within a hundred thousand and much higher like usually it would be just you know 10th place would be a hundred thousand ninth place would be a hundred and fifty thousand like it was competitive and it was crazy nowadays I've seen manga debut at number one with like 60 something thousand copies, 50 something. Like, it's a vast difference. And I say all that to say that, yeah, manga sales are shrinking. So, I guess let's start going through these sales of these big projects because 
This is going to determine a lot moving forward for Shonen Jump, for Shonen Battle series, and for manga as a whole. Because in my opinion, honestly, I feel as though in favor of all of the international distribution, in favor of these big anime projects with these gigantic, bu well, not gigantic budgets, I guess the committees get the budget and whatnot, and, you know, animators get the scraps or whatnot, you know, these big anime, they kind of have been more so in favor of those and allowing seemingly the manga physical sales to shrink. Now, granted, we don't have access to, because those are closely guarded, the sales figures for the digital sales of manga, so that all also could be a big factor i don't know how much of a factor let's keep it real how many people do you know that is like nah i don't buy physical i buy digital and i'm gonna even add on to that in a later story that we're gonna be talking about that buying digital just it's starting to look like a horrible idea to be honest with you unless you 110 percent have the file sitting on your desktop it, if it is other than that it's a bad idea but Let's get started because I don't want to waste you guys' time. We're going to start off with, let's look at Kagurabachi. And you're probably like, but, but what's Kagurabachi? And in case you missed out on the wave of Kagurabachi, Kagurabachi is, again, something that recently came out. It's probably, I don't know, maybe got like 30 chapters or something, somewhere in that ballpark. And it went viral in a lot of memes and jokey way in the West, which is crazy for a manga in the West to go viral very early on. It was literally like, I think the first chapter or even before the first chapter dropped, now that I think about it, it was just the imagery. People thought it was funny and made memes and it kind of went viral. And Japan, despite the fact that Kagurabachi seemingly isn't beloved over there, has been holding on to this like, nah, dog, we got one. We've covered over here on Forever News how many editors have spoke out, how many people have come out from Shonen Jump and Shueisha and praised that, nah, Kagurabachi, it may not be the biggest here in Japan, but it's big internationally. So, these sales, there's a, a catch-22 to it, right? Because on one hand, it seems as though Japan, for the first time ever, <laughs> is betting on a new manga sold on the west loving it outside of japan loving it they don't do that like in fact when i tell you these sales right now i'm gonna tell you that there is many manga i have seen that have sold twice this amount with its first volume that i've got canceled but let's look here because the first i want to say three days worth of sales for kagurabachi are in and taking a look right here it shows that kagurabachi has sold 12,386 copies in its first three days. Now, granted, give it the extra four days. I don't know. Maybe it'll sell 20K, roughly around that ballpark. But 12.3K for its first volume, that is literally... Well, I guess it's kind of impressive because standing next to it on this chart is Undead Unluck, which literally has less than 100 copies more. And Undead Unluck has an anime on TV right now. So I guess <laughs> in comparison, it's kind of impressive. But just as a whole, uh, I remember Hungry Joker, you know, the previous series of the author of Black Clover. He had a series called Hungry Joker. And I remember that had like 24,000 copies sold first week and got canceled. Obviously, different time. We're talking about a decade ago. But I say all that to say that 12.3K when we get next week and we see after a full week's worth of sales what it's looking like, then we can probably more properly judge this thing. But I will say that 12.3k for a new manga that is trying to be like a big epic battle series, that ain't cutting the mustard to being a massive hit. You know, I've seen manga when they really are coming in like a hit, like Assassination Classroom selling hundreds of thousands of copies week one. I've seen stuff like that. This right here... I think a portion of this, and they're going to regret this later, Japan and Shueisha and Shonen Jump might regret this later, is the fact that they're algorithm chasing when it comes to this one, and they're betting a lot on this one, um, because it has a certain level, it still has a, a level of the previous generation of Jump that we're kind of just exiting out of now, that darker, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Chainsaw Man, that edgy grit to it. So it kind of has that, but it's a lot more lighthearted. So it's definitely a blend of the last generation and kind of going into this more, I don't want to say softer, but less uh, violent and gory generation that we're in right now. 
it also feels like to me personally and maybe i'm totally off on this but it seems very reminiscent of what's currently going on right now with boruto 2 blue vortex like if you take away the naruto aesthetic and everything that comes from it of what makes boruto this kind of gives that same scenario same setup just a little bit more grittier and again that's probably because they recognize well subconsciously a lot of these people they love boruto they just don't love boruto because of it being boruto so how about we make a manga using that concept but make it not boruto and unfortunately again it doesn't seem like it's doing great we will see after a full week's worth of sales what it does but as it stands right now kagurabachi ain't looking great in japan 110 percent if you are a fan of this manga and you want to see this manga win it is imperative that whenever this comes over here, if it does manage, if, if Shonen Jump decides to stand by its side and let it go the distance and not get canceled, you need to buy that Kagurabachi volume. You need to stream the Kagurabachi anime. This is the one shot that you have as a Westerner, as an English-speaking fan of anime and manga to make a difference. When Kagurabachi comes over here, you better buy it because they're doing this for you. And this is an interesting experiment. Granted, I wish it was for a little bit of a different series because I like Kagurabachi. It isn't the greatest thing in the world. I wish they would have given this luxury and we had this set up an opportunity back in the day for some of the other canceled series that Shonen Jump desperately should have let rock a bit. Like Iron Knight, Hungry Joker, Takamaga. Like there's a million Jump series I can name right now that should have let them cook a little bit more. But again, we will see. Let me know how you feel. Do you think that in three days, 12.3K for a new Jump title, a new battle series and one of the most popular shonen magazines is that yay nay is manga just as a whole in trouble because then we'll we'll cut from that one again kagurabachi art looks great on the cover by the way i just want to throw that in there again that's it's a beautiful aesthetic but then we'll go from that to which just while we have them here a lot of the other newbies mama yu yu ain't really doing well i think it's done less than 12k sales newies exorcist 12k undead on luck doing less than 100 copies or like what 80 copies more than kagurabachi with an anime on air that's not good shout out to undead on luck i love the anime i've read some of the manga it's great but yeah undead on luck they probably going to end that sooner than later at this point if the anime ain't moving the needle and a little bit above there is elusive samurai which has an anime incoming so we can't completely bet but that's only less than what that's like 4.5k more than undead unluck and kagurabachi and elusive samurai is the same author that did assassination classroom so again sales not looking great on that front but one of the ones that i was talking about earlier uh black clover black clover's latest volume 34.5k i want to say that is if not the lowest and top three lowest sales first week i've ever seen for black clover again it's three days i can imagine with black clover it might do 40 50k in a full seven days maybe a bit more because black clover you know sometimes the fans may be slacking a little bit but they'll get it together by the end of the week or the second week or whatnot but black clover even seen it some of its lowest sales this is a large testament to shonen mangas going down the tubes <laughs> like i don't know how else to say this i understand that some people are gonna say no you don't know the digital or no these sales aren't that bad i've been covering this segment extensively each and every week for years now i can assure you that this is a massive downslide from where we were just a few years ago sales wise for manga digital sales if they ever release them may change the the entire outlook on this thing but kagurabachi 12.3k black clover 34.5 i come from the days where naruto and one piece well we're still seeing that shit jujutsu kaisen i'm sure just sold another 100k this week and it did 700 something k first week on the latest volume so there are cases where manga is still selling but we're heading towards you know in a strange way back to the the days of the big three and what i mean by that is a few manga are, are getting really, really high sales. Like Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach were the ones that, oh my god, they sell so much. And then everything else is just tumbling all the way down under. So that's why Jujutsu Kaisen is probably still rocking and hasn't been ended. Because Shonen Jump is like, we don't got nothing else to follow this up right now. We need to stick with this. Ain't nothing going to do sales like this. Yeah, but the main enchilada of this whole situation, because we talked about all these, but I know one of the ones that a lot of you are probably very interested in is, well, what has Boruto's time skip? The thing that Boruto fans, including myself, I'm not going to try and act like I haven't been, Boruto fans have been screaming with every L we've taken. 
when you know we thought oh the manga's about to take off with Kara and it never really you know kind of launched into that level of popularity we thought it would and Naruto fans would embrace it it didn't happen when Naruto and Sasuke were fighting against Jigen and Ishiki Otsutsuki when Baryon mode happened we thought this is it yeah likewise with Kashin Koji there's been a lot of times where Boruto fans were like no this is it and then the one hope we all was holding on to the one hope from the very beginning of Boruto that we felt like nah this is what's going to do it this right here is how Boruto wins is a lot of people thought the time skip was going to be the savior a lot of people thought that when we get to two blue vortex well we didn't know two blue vortex's name at the time but when we get to that older Boruto sales are going to go through the roof everybody's going to jump on board and in Japan, it doesn't seem to be the case. I think that there's also a cultural difference. I think we hold Two Blue Vortex a lot more in a higher regard and a lot more in a special regard than the Japanese do. I think for them, it's just like, oh, okay, he's a little bit older. For us, it's like time skip. Ooh, because sales aren't great either. In fact, sales are pretty disappointing if you compare it to one of its contemporaries right now, Dragon Ball Super, that is in the same magazine and it's the same setup and scenario of, hey, it's a sequel spin off to you know the mega successful dragon ball z now we got dragon ball super boruto is a spin-off sequel to the mega successful naruto now we got boruto 2 blue vortex oricon top 50 manga sales from january 29th to february 4th boruto 2 blue vortex again i want to say in its first three days it did 31,837 copies and the final boruto naruto next generations volume I want to say this is the one before it went to the time skip. Did about 33,000 copies, almost 34,000 in their first three days. So I'm going to be very honest with you. These sales are not good at all. Dragon Ball Super in a recap story. Like, remember how Dragon Ball Super, in case you don't know, Dragon Ball Super for a year now feels like it's been on hiatus because it was just redoing the movie and the manga. And who wants that? I could watch the movie a thousand times and the manga was still going, you know what I'm saying, of readapting re that stuff. But that was not stopping it from selling. It was still selling 70, 80, 90,000 copies first week. You know what I'm saying? And then before that, when it was on the epic stuff that was going on in the previous arc, the Granola, the Survivor stuff and whatnot, it was doing 160,000, 130,000 first week. So I say all that, you come from those sales and you look at what Boruto was doing with its big time skip. You know, this is Boruto's time to shine. We all been waiting and doing a little over 30,000, doing less than the latest volume of Black Clover that is just like, you know, it's not a big moment in Black Clover or anything like that. I mean, I guess granted, you know, Black Clover being away, it makes it a little bit more exciting. There's a volume or whatnot. Boruto 2 Blue Vortex and the Boruto whole experience as far as sales go, not quality wise, because I want to stress that I am very much so loving and enjoying the Boruto manga. I think most fans of the Boruto manga are really, really impressed and excited and grateful for 2 Blue Vortex's existence. It is great. It is awesome. I am recommending you as if you're a Naruto fan that doesn't care about Boruto, so you should check it out but i also say that these sales show that boruto uh is still somewhat in the failure territory and unless shueisha gets behind it with a massive i don't know what at this point because i can't quote story wise i don't think there's anything left that boruto could do as a story other than literally just making boruto non-existent and naruto and sasuke being at the helm of things i don't think and even that didn't really help because look when the ishiki stuff went down it was doing about 50k and then after that it went down even further so there's literally nothing in my opinion story-wise no plot twist no anything that boruto could do at this point to make that big surge that all fans have been hoping for of the boruto series to make it go to the 100ks and uh, again a lot of people might be thinking well okay so what it's, it's not selling great who cares are you profiting from it why do you care so much about the sales of boruto to blue vortex or any of these manga for that matter why care you know i'm not getting a profit from them making money selling books as a fan of manga what is in it for me to care well i'll tell you right now 110 percent these sales and obviously caring and being able to do something about the sales you know obviously i can't i mean i guess i could order some books from japan but me ordering even 10 copies of two blue vortex ain't gonna really move the needle the importance of these sales is the fact that i don't think the boruto manga is gonna go on that much longer i don't think 
2 Blue Vortex is going to go as long as Part 1 of Boruto or go the distance in general. If we are at 31,000 and Boruto, I could show you the graph right here. In fact, I have the graph. Let's look at the graph right here. Boruto sales from Volume 1 all the way to 2 Blue Vortex is abysmal, bro. It is absolutely abysmal. The sales, it's clearly a straight down slide down. I know there's going to be a lot of fans that get upset about this. He's like, he's telling the truth. He's not. And so with that, if sales are continuing to decline, what three more volumes from now, four more volumes from now, we're going to be doing probably barely 20K, less than 20K. They're going to end this sooner than later. It honestly even feels to a certain degree if you're reading the two Blue Vortex manga that it's going very quick. Things don't seem like the story is building up into anything more grandiose that is going to take us to faraway lands like I thought it would have. And with sales like this, I'm going to bet if we're in 2024 right now, two Blue Vortex, the manga itself may go on for another couple years because at the end of the day i'm sure they're still dedicated to we can't completely crash out and put a bad rushed ending that nobody cares about because it's still attached to the naruto ip they're going to sooner than later i'm gonna be very generous and say three years and i could be totally wrong they could go till 2030 with the boruto story i'm gonna say three years max boruto's manga will go the anime they probably already trying to figure out okay how we're gonna animate this how we're gonna do this three years more max a boruto's manga and they're gonna end it unless something insane happens where sales rise because let's keep it real it is not a good look per se public image wise for one of the highest selling manga of all times sequel spinoff uh to be you know getting into like once it hits you know 15k first week for a naruto related product i don't think that's gonna fly so i'm gonna call it within the next three years boruto out the way and whatever they're gonna do with the franchise whether they're gonna create a whole new naruto story whatever it is because i hate to be that guy that is just talking the voice of what fans really think like fans will be all over a new naruto series fans will be all over a sasuke series they were uh, uh, in the west at the very least on that sasuke red suit and stuff you know what i'm saying fans as a whole collectively just don't seem to be at the very least they don't Look at Boruto worth investing money-wise. Because reader-wise, it'll tell you a different story. You go on YouTube right now, there's videos with millions of views of things related to Boruto. Reviews, people get a crap ton of views on those for talking about Boruto. The readership for the Boruto manga will tell you, no, people really read this. Hundreds of thousands of people read the chapters online. Unless something changes though and sales come in, I don't see how much more Boruto could go, honestly. Like, do you really think Shueisha is gonna be like, yeah, Boruto selling 3,000 copies. We're gonna keep it going. Eventually, the ship will close up and it'll be a lot sooner than later if it doesn't change, which I don't see any, like, before I used to have, if the story does this, if they do this with the characters, that hope is gone. Two Blue Vortex, not dead on arrival, but it didn't move the needle. It just went further down with the last volume doing 33K, this one doing 31K. Let me know if you're a Boruto fan, what do you think? How much longer do you think Boruto is going to go? Do you think they're going to ignore the low sales in favor of the anime returning and they're going to do a big thing like a bleach type of situation maybe not wait 10 years but where they maybe maybe that's what'll happen maybe they're gonna wait until they finish the thousand year blood war to bring the boruto anime back because that is studio piro and it seems like they're focusing all their efforts in to the thousand year blood war maybe they're gonna do the thousand year blood war type of approach for the boruto anime and wrap up the manga and again move on to something else and i feel like i'm a broken record at this point of saying two blue vortex not selling well we'll see at the full week sales but as it stands right now 31k not what we wanted, not what we hoped for. <sighs> and then quickly, I just wanted to share that Kagurabachi has released some voice comics over in the West. And apparently they're doing pretty well. They actually released it in English, which is yet again another testament to the fact that they are really focusing in on the Westerners for this one. Like they normally only release voice comics in Japanese. So the fact that they made one in English, they really, really want Kagurabachi and they really believe in the fandom. I mean, even for crying out loud, Kohei Horikoshi, the author of My Hero Academia, put out the good word about Kagurabachi and recommended. Need I say more? Moving forward, this was a story that kind of took me by surprise. I still, I believe it, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, 
Ah, I don't know how to feel. Because in case you don't know, for quite a bit now, Sony has purchased many anime conglomerates, or not many, just the most important ones. They have Crunchyroll and Funimation. And for the longest time, the writing's been on the wall that Funimation was going to be shutting down. Uh, eventually, Crunchyroll was going to be the brand that they roll with, and Funimation was going to get, you know, dissolved into it slowly but surely. And it seems as though that time has come, but there's a lot more to it that is making it very spicy and has anime fans, rightfully so, very upset with what Funimation is doing in their last moments before they dip out. Because essentially, they are giving fans, to a certain degree, the middle finger on something when it comes to stuff that people have paid for. But again, let's read, let's read the obituary that is planned for Funimation. Service update. Thank you for being a loyal Funimation customer. The Funimation service is ending on April 2nd, 2020. Four. You can still access the content you love on Crunchyroll, which houses one of the largest anime libraries, subs and dubs, catalog and simulcast, as well as games and the Crunchyroll store. Who really goes on Crunchyroll to play games? Let's keep it real. <laughs> you don't have to leave your Funimation watch history and Funimation queue behind. You can migrate them to Crunchyroll. Please log into Crunchyroll using your Funimation credentials. If you already have a Crunchyroll account, your accounts will be merged and you will be prompted to mitigate your user information at login. As part of your transition to Crunchyroll, the price of your new Crunchyroll plan will increase from USD $599 to USD $999 beginning April 17th. Future bill. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you're going to be paying a bit more. Future billing will be provided by Crunchyroll. Changes will be reflected in your next billing cycle starting on April 17th. But then, something that has fans mad because it's already like, okay, you know, nobody wants to migrate. What the hell? But that's not the biggest deal in the world. People on Funimation have purchased digital copies of anime. You know, that you, you sometimes even get, I think, like vouchers and some of the Blu-rays you would get. Like, hey, get the digital version as well. And it would be through Funimation. Like, you would have to, I think, watch it through Funimation. It was like, you don't really have the file per se. So, some people were asking, well, what's going to happen to my digital copies now that Funimation is going under? Crunchyroll, to my knowledge, doesn't have that ability to be able to purchase uh you know a, a file or whatnot to purchase a, an anime a movie an episode nothing like that it's just all streaming so they responded and said we understand that you may have concerns about your digital copies from funimation these digital copies available on funimation were a digital access to the content available on the dvds or blu-rays purchase please note that crunchyroll does not currently support Funimation digital copies, which means that access to previously available digital copies will not be supported. However, we are continuing to work to enhance our content offerings and provide you blah, blah, blah. Essentially, they're not going to honor it. <laughs> Your digital copies are gone. Funimation, you know, they got their checks. They got paid. The higher ups got what they wanted. And tough luck if you bought some digital copies you ain't watching them no more now you gotta go pay for them again or you gotta keep on paying for the rest of eternity paying your entire life to one of these streaming services if you want to watch it because it's getting scary out here it's getting scary in terms of like if you just pay attention to the market of dvd and blu-ray releases for anime they're getting slimmer and fewer and far between for at the very least western releases like it seems as though they're going along with the motto of some of the other streaming services of well why am i gonna put out a product that is going to make them leave my streaming service which would be the dvd blu-rays you know the hard copies or whatnot when i could just make them pay and stay here and watch it digitally you know the, the saying they will own nothing and be happy with it like that seems to be the case that they're trying to go with because there are plenty of anime sure they they are releasing some of them don't get me wrong some of them you would be like oh, okay they, they still putting on blu-rays like i think they did a partnership i want to say oh no it was i want to say maybe it was netflix and viz did a jojo's partnership to release part six on blu-ray but there's a lot of these streaming services that just aren't releasing dvds and blu-rays and i've seen a breakdown of the fact that yeah crunchyroll they are getting less and less with the releases of dvds and blu-rays granted we also have another thing to consider the fact that one of the biggest chains of physical distribution of you know instant gratification purchasing best buy recently closed their doors to selling physical media as far as dvds and blu-rays so now that's an even another hurdle um, it looks like 
the entire world is really trying to push us towards don't own anything just keep on paying for streaming services for the rest of your life like imagine back in the days you never bought movies or nothing everything all your entertainment was reliant on cable tv that's pretty much the way that they're going with this one and it's disturbing. They're doing you dirty over your digital copies that you already paid for. They're not giving you any sort of refund or any sort of alternative other than go to Crunchyroll. And as a fan of Funimation, because I grew up on Funimation, okay? I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, seeing their Funimation. You should be watching all the, <laughs> the goofy stuff that they've done over the years. Like uh, what they did with the Orange Bricks, Dragon Ball Z. If you know, you know to do that. Did the remastering and his profession was pretty wild. Uh, but to see them close their doors, I have some great memories with Funimation as well, though. You know, I was invited to several of their events. I hung out with, you know, a lot of the voice actors. I had a lot of great memories with them. So, uh, salute to Funimation. It seems as though April 2nd is 110% the end, the true end of an era. An, an end of something that... Since I was a kid, you know, was a big part of my entertainment and whatnot. And I know they're just a company, but wow, it's kind of crazy to see them getting dissolved into Crunchyroll. And yeah, it's kind of it's scary. Honestly, anime and manga, you know, I've said it many times in the past, but 110% we're in a transitional phase of things is going different. And there's been times throughout um, anime fandom in the West at the very least that I've seen the changes. You know, it was like 2006 when I think it was 06, 07 when Toonami or maybe it was 08. I don't know. It was somewhere in that ballpark where Toonami went off air and it looked real grim and DVDs weren't selling. Now we're at another weird phase where... It's like physical media is dying out or they're making it die out and things aren't going like it's it's chaotic but uh rest in peace to funimation i guess we still got a, a another month and some change month and a half or so of living with it but yeah also yeah i really gotta uh honor people on those digital copies like that's just wrong that's just messed up it's like screw you but that should be a lesson if you purchase digital on funimation whenever you purchase digital unless you have the the copy itself on your desktop not linked to anything else you don't own that you're wasting your money you should either if you're not streaming already or whatnot go still purchase physical product maybe one day the streaming services will be gone and all the shows and movies that you love to watch won't be around and you'll either have to resort to pirating or go buy some physical support the things that you love and own the things that you love as well all right moving forward this is a very big story in case you don't know on the internet when it comes to manga in particular Piracy is very, very big. <laughs> Piracy with manga is humongous. The amount of people that pirate and don't read it on the official sites and official apps is huge. But even more so than that, something over the last few years I'd say has become a phenomenon like no other, and that's leaks. Leaks, early scanlations, spoilers, all of that stuff has become a big deal. I'm not going to shy away and say like, oh, I wasn't somebody like, yeah, I would definitely take a look at leaks myself. I've, I've enjoyed, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's some sort of a, a weird rush. But leaks are important to a lot of people. However, leaks also affect the manga industry. A lot of them feel like, you know, this is ruining the way they release things and they are not happy. So much so that it has led to arrests and it looks like leaks and spoilers and early scanlations are slowly but surely going to be i don't want to say a thing of the past but because i've seen this before i remember when they were attacking scanlation sites for you know putting up illegal scans of the manga that was a big deal like 10 years ago and we're, here we are still going at it but we got a few different reports that say here. NHK reports that three foreigners have been arrested for violating the copyright law by posting images of weekly Shonen Jump series online. The suspect purchased the magazine at stores before its release date. Police are investigating and more people are involved. Police released to the press the Shonen Jump and other items seized from leakers. And yeah, if you look at it, they got full-blown Shonen Jump magazines. And probably when they took these pictures, these were probably uh more newer or whatnot or just in general what they had in their archive asahi also informs that police are investigating websites in which one piece and jujutsu kaisen were published before release of the magazine images depict evidence collected including scans raws images and posts on social media op scans have shut down their website second one after scan pia a bit earlier so two major players i remember one piece scans i forget which youtubers were 
uh, co-signing them or whatnot. But I remember them. I never used them. Again, I for a while now, I've honestly just been, for the most part, sticking to the officials because it's kind of like on Sunday or Monday, depending on when they, you know, release them, if there's a holiday or whatever. Like, I got everything right there. No advertisements. Pretty good translations. I know sometimes they suck, but for the most part, they're good translations. I never really felt like in recent times this was necessary but that is a major major deal shoesha also issued a statement on the recent arrest due to weekly shonen jump leaks the editorial states both them and the authors are concerned about these issues and will keep taking measures to protect their works i'm gonna keep it all the way real with you by no means do i want people to get in trouble period o over you know manga scanlations but something's gotta give something's gotta give i think they're also taking aggressive action when if you watch the segment that we just talked about a little earlier manga sales are not the hottest right now while everything else is exploding anime there's a new anime every five freaking seconds being announced and you know globally and internationally things are booming at home some of the biggest Top Guns aren't selling great. I mean, Boruto, a spinoff of the most or one of the most popular manga globally, Naruto is doing like 30,000 on a big moment of a time skip first volume. So if you take that into account, yeah, they are probably getting a little bit desperate and a little taking extra measures into, well, okay, these people, uh, on top of all that, it's just a wild level. I, I could only imagine how disrespected and how violated you would feel as an author that is working 21 hours a day to see yo i just submitted that three hours ago how was it already leaked out in the west what the hell is going on here so yeah that is definitely a very big problem an invasion of privacy all sorts of stuff you know violating your intellectual copyright all of that good stuff but in general it is also at the very least they got to be looking at it in a way like it's kind of a affecting sales like dog i know 110 percent like i'm not gonna lie here or whatnot i know 110 percent i've said this before and i'll say it again i used to especially with music before streaming services i bought music when streaming services came along i slowed down a lot on buying music because it was just readily available the same thing with this scenario as well i've slowed down a lot on purchasing manga because it's all right there on the shonen jump app i got the latest one piece i could read any chapter of one piece whenever i want and you know you take it a step further for the people that aren't even wanting to pay that the two or three bucks a month i mean come on bro you got two or three bucks if you if you're able to watch this video right now on your internet, you have two or three dollars a month. Don't tell me about no other budgets because entertainment is a part of your resume, right? It's a part of your schedule, right? The reason you watch me is chances are you either have, you currently, or you will be getting into anime and manga. So you got the time, you got you got two or three dollars. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to push nobody. You do what you want. You don't want to pay for it, that's on you. But I'm just saying, like the people with the excuses and whatnot, it's two or three bucks. You help sustain the manga industry i guess to a certain degree or you you help your favorite artists and authors or whatnot and you have access and high pristine quality to some of the best stuff and at the very least you're giving back you're not just completely taking or whatnot and i think that that's one of the main issues i, I ain't gonna lie when you look at situation shonen jump who wouldn't be mad who wouldn't be going hardcore at fans when it's like bro we're giving you a deal. We're giving you a steal. You don't got to do much, bro. So why are you stealing? It is what it is. We will see what blowback this has. But I got to imagine that leaks and scanlations are going to start to slow down a little bit. Especially if they went after foreigners. They're not playing. And they're going to want to make an example out of somebody so that people stop the, the stealing and stop posting leaks of a chapter that won't be out for another week and a half you know but let me know what you feel about this situation how do you feel about the arrest of the foreigners how do you feel about the way shueisha and shonen jump are tackling this situation and what do you think is going to come from it to be honest with you we over 10 years ago we dealt with similar instances so i don't know if this is ever gonna really completely go away but they can mitigate it and kind of change it a little bit because it is ridiculous that you're knowing what's going to happen for the next One Piece chapter like 9, 10, 11 days before it comes out. I mean, I think it was last month or the month before that, uh, a Boruto, we had Boruto spoilers like two weeks before it even came out. It was like, what the hell is going on? I have a graph right here that showcases the decrease in sales for the physical market for manga, books, and magazines i got right here showcases it's just straight up facts look at the decrease in physical publication it is not just a few books from 2014 to 2023 we have dipped 
quite a bit financially for the physical market like the digital age the problem is is that it's a lot easier to steal in the digital age than it is than it was back in the day back in the day you want to steal you got to go into a store and grab the book and make sure you don't get caught nowadays it's a couple of downloads away so that is also another factor added into the whole thing of i also think that there's to a certain degree a something that probably most fans don't want to admit there's a major major burnout i think the pandemic was a blessing and a curse it got a lot of people into anime and manga but a lot of people went so hardcore reading and watching and talking about it and all that that they burned themselves the hell out so when the pandemic kind of came to a close a lot of people were like i don't care <laughs> i don't want it so i think that's also another factor moving forward i got a quick story i thought was pretty interesting and a dope thing of kodansha to do because kodansha is offering weekly and besatsu magazine oh so weekly shonen magazine and besatsu magazine issues for free after january 1st is earthquake on the evening of january 1st the noto peninsula on the japan seaside of japan was struck by a 7.6 mag 2 earthquake although a month passed relief efforts and donations are still pouring in to help those who've been affected however not all the relief is on site or monetary distribution of manga to areas affected by the quake have been difficult so kodansha announced on january 30th that it will be offering a handful of its manga magazines free of charge we would like to express our deepest sympathies to everyone affected by 2024 noto peninsula earthquake due to the recent earthquake which has caused delivery delays and purchase unavailable in some areas for our magazines we will be releasing issues six through nine of weekly shonen magazine and the february issue of Basatsu shonen magazine for free while the announcement on the official twitter account for weekly shonen magazine was a bit light on the details the magazine's website elaborates four issues of weekly shonen magazine and one issue of besatsu are available for free a maga poke smartphone app paperback distribution to the affected areas is rather difficult and as the tweet says caused delays um it's a dope thing i'm, I'm 110 percent that's awesome they're giving some free stuff over there but i will say it's like yeah you're getting some good publicity out of it, mate, huh? Some good marketing. But salute to Kodansha either way. Give them some free shit, man. They're going through a lot out there. Then a story that shout out to my mom for pushing me to talk about this because I really was like, ah, it's cool. But, you know, I kind of figure like if people that aren't really in the anime and manga culture are taking notice of things like this, then it's probably a big deal. <laughs> That's usually the case. Because in case you don't know, it's been rummaging around for a couple of weeks now. There are Reese's Puffs Dragon Ball Z series. <laughs> yeah we we made it you know what i'm saying we here we lit because i guess there's been a crossover that was done with reese's puffs and dragon ball z and i can assure you as somebody that uh tested it out it is just regular reese's puffs it's not goku shaped or anything like that it's just reese's puffs with goku on the box and there's multiple different boxes to collect of like oh you got you know krillin on the cover well i don't know if krillin is on the cover but you get what i'm saying but it says here dragon ball z reese's puff cereal is now part of a balanced super saiyan breakfast dragon ball z for breakfast general mills's reese's puff cereal is rocking the dragon with a limited time collaboration with dragon ball z the dbz cereal comes in seven different collectible boxes each featuring a different character from goku vegeta trunks piccolo cell frieza and Maj and boo when no krillin <laughs> there's also an eighth box featuring the wish granting dragon shenron that is exclusive to sam's club stores so sam's club probably got a bunch of new customers note that collecting seven boxes does not guarantee a wish from shenron that's so corny and as you can see right here that's the box uh, unfortunately the pups themselves are not decorated as dragon balls should have been missed opportunity however at least they're spherical so feel free to use imagination when scarfing down the bite-sized orbs and as you see right here goku vegeta trunks piccolo cell frieza boo where's the krillin box justice for krillin the special reese's puffs box are currently available in stores but they are only scheduled to stay until may or while supplies last honestly again i wasn't going to talk about it but i feel like it was an acknowledgement when other people are like, yo, man, you know, you've been talking about that anime for so long and it's crazy. You see, they got Dragon Ball Reese's Puffs. Like, we really made it. That is a testament to that. It's acknowledgement outside of people that, you know, care at all about anime that it has grown in prominence. You know, it's it's here now. When you have a, a cereal box after you, you know you've done something. So, so and I'm not saying that as like the biggest gold medal in the world. Get your checks, get your money. The, that's the, you know what I'm saying? Or better yet, get self-growth. That is the win. Yeah. But nevertheless, I still think it's a really dope feat. Never in a million years when I was a young kid would I have thought we would have reached this point where I could have, you know, a, a box of cereal with Frieza or Trunks on it. But 
We're here. Salute to Dragon Ball Z making it all the way there. We made it! And real quickly, I wanted to talk about uh, the Demon Slayer New World Tour where they're showing the Hashira training first episode along with, I think, the last episode or two of the previous season. Uh, it's out in theaters over there in Japan. And it says here, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba to the Hashira training. The theatrical screening of the one-hour first episode of the Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Hashira training arc TV anime debut at number one no surprise in the japanese box office in its opening weekend the screening sold about 4.35 million dollars in its first three days which is not the biggest thing in the world i don't think but then again bro they're doing that on an episode this is free money for them following the world tour the theatrical screening will premiere in north american theaters february 23rd and it will scream in imax and premium large formats the demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba hashira training arc anime will premiere this spring and uh i'm gonna be honest with you I think, again, it's just good job on milking it. <laughs> Honestly, like, you're not going to convince me otherwise that this isn't just a great way of them milking out on a popular shonen anime and doing whatever. I mean, for crying out loud, Demon Slayer manga ended four years ago now, and we're still going on. I think literally it ended February of 2020, and we're still rocking <laughs> with the anime and still many seasons to go and putting episodes in theaters. Ufotable's getting their bread, dog. I ain't mad at it, I guess. It is what it is. Then quickly, a short little story here. Apparently, Look Back by the author of Chainsaw Man, Tatsuki Fujimoto, is getting an anime adaptation, judging from a recent web domain registration, lookbackanime.com. It's a coming-of-age artist drama about two girls from a small town competing and inspiring each other on their ways to become, I think it's authors and whatnot. I remember reading that one. I remember it being phenomenal and i want to say a lot of people felt like it was a homage and homage to the kyoto animation arson situation um but i remember it just being a very heart shattering and emotional story i recommend it i know are you recommending heartbroken but it was written very well and tatsuki fujimoto he just knows how to make these banger one shots bro like not only is chainsaw man a wild ride but his one shots be very very fire as well then i thought this was an interesting story that apparently a assistant on the black clover manga just launched their own new manga black clover fans are waiting on two fronts for the story of Asta to continue as the potential wizard king is set to come to an end with its manga and anime while the series was created and continued to be worked on by yuki tabata it takes a village to make a popular shonen a former assistant to tabata has taken the opportunity to start a manga series of their own leaving the wizard king and focusing on a beastly tale of magic and mystery in beast king and medicine herb the manga world is preparing to see some of the biggest stories wrap with black clover not being the only shonen series that is inching towards its conclusion the sorcerers of the manga are said to be joined by the likes of the students of jujutsu tech the straw hat pirates of the grand line and the heroes of ua academy jujutsu kaisen one piece and my hero have set the stage to say goodbye to their heroes and villains with black clover aiming to do the same with the next chapter set to arrive this spring black clover has yet to reveal how many more chapters are in the tank though the finale will be highly anticipated without a doubt uh this new manga though by this assistant and Beast King and Medicinal Herb uh, began late last year with Juo Toyakusuo receiving a major recommendation from the creator of Free Air and Beyond Journey's End, Kanehito Yamada. While the series has yet to officially make its way to North America, it's safe bet it will one day hit the West thanks to manga's increased popularity. And yeah, if you don't know about it, essentially, the dungeon is a dream come true. Strip the metals from defeated monsters and reach the unexplored areas to get the treasures. Tina, an adventurer who dreams of becoming such a success while exploring the dungeon, is seriously wounded. She is confronted by a powerful demon tribe that was once killed by a brave warrior. The most powerful demon Garon the Beast King who was supposed to have been killed by a hero in the past. Cool beans. If they worked on Black Clover maybe it's something dope. I mean we've seen uh, the assistant to Tatsuki Fujimoto's Chainsaw Man. He came out with Don the Don and that is brilliant so maybe we'll see what's up and then last but not least in case you don't know a trailer was released for my hero academia's upcoming movie uh i believe it also has a new title it's not just called my hero academia the movie but let's see here it says my hero academia why evil all might is deku's perfect opponent yeah if you didn't watch the trailer apparently it seems like there's an evil all might or I don't know exactly what's going on there. My Hero has had three movies in the tank, expanding on the world of UA Academy by throwing unique threats at the heroes not seen in the main series. With the final arc taking place in the pages of its manga, many fans were left wondering what territory the 
fourth film would cover. The latest trailer arrived to get fans hype, introducing what appears to be an evil All Might, potentially giving Izuku Midoriya the perfect foil to his quest to become a professional crime fighter. Throughout the history of My Hero Academia, All Might has been by Deku's side, whether that be a powerful hero fighting against All for One, or as a mentor that attempts to teach Izuku Midoriya how to better harness the power of One for All. While the Shonen series has focused on Deku taking on dark reflections of the many heroes, such as Shigaraki and All for One, fighting against an evil version of his mentor takes things up to an entirely different level. Izuku Midoriya has long been set up as a future symbol of peace, so fighting against an evil iteration of a past bearer of that title makes for some interesting storytelling. And yeah, uh, trailer looks interesting, I'm not gonna lie. I was already excited about this movie because it was saying like, you know, or it was promoted as solo hero Deku even further because I really love that part of the story. Adding an evil All Might. At first, I was a little bit like, uh, I don't know. Do I like it? Then the more I thought about it, I was like, okay. <laughs> you got me. Why not? Uh, My Hero Academia movies, some of them are hits. Some of them are misses. Second one, I really liked. First one was okay. Third one, mm, this one could be great though. Who knows? And yeah, people, that's all I have for this episode of Forever News. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'm Tim, and as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day. Peace, and you guys just watched another episode of Forever News. Have an awesome day. Make sure to check out my album, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, out now, and my freestyle that I just released, uh, Creative Luxury. Check that out. Room for all the mirrors. Shout outs to everybody. Let's go. Action. Maybe you can see when I'm moving Never can I lie to the beauty Never can I have what I'm doing Maybe our love is a movie Maybe our love is a movie Maybe our love is a movie Never can I have what I'm doing Maybe our love is a movie